Today I'm going to sell you on the idea of keeping African cichlids. I'm going to answer the question of does decor impact aggression in your fish and we're going to have the dreaded glowfish debate. I'm also going to pick a comment of the week so we're going to have all kinds of fun. Let's get to it. Hey folks, it's John with KG Tropical. Super excited to be here for another episode of Tank Talk. If this is your first time joining us on Tank Talk, us, it's just me. This is where I take your questions directly from the comment sections of my videos and I answer them here in a kind of rambling format. It's very relaxed. We just, we just riff. That's all we do here. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to see your question answered in a future episode of Tank Talk, put it down below. You never know. I might pick it. Let's get to it. First question today comes from Mark Drish. I hope that's how you say your name. I would love for somebody to try and sell me on African cichlids. I don't see it, but I love to love them, LOL. They would be a lot less troublesome for me to attain and keep. Since the beginning, I've just seen no appeal in them. They aren't unique, minus the shell dwellers. They literally look all the same to me. I keep hearing they're aggressive, but they look like pussycats compared to my Central American cichlids, which brings me to why it would be awesome if I saw their appeal. I could have a bunch of them in one of my 75s. I just feel like there must be something I'm missing, like a reason why they are so popular. If I wanted colors, wouldn't I just go saltwater? I've been dealing with African cichlids for decades, and I was a retailer of African cichlids for a long time. I was a breeder of African cichlids for a long time. This is the first time I've ever had a question like this. This is why I selected it because I've never had anybody say, hey, I don't get it. Sell me. Sell me on the idea of African cichlids. I've never, never really had that. It's always just been people, hey, I like African cichlids. This is what I want. What do you got? Uh, so I thought this was kind of cool, something different uh, from what I'm used to doing. Uh, so I don't sell African cichlids, first of all. I think you know that, um, and you weren't asking me to literally sell them to you. Uh, so understand, when I speak about this, I'm not trying to sell you anything, because I don't have anything to sell you. Uh, the appeal of African cichlids does first start with the colors. Uh, your last bit of your comment was, if I wanted colors, wouldn't I just go saltwater? Sure, you could. Um, saltwater is a completely different deal, though. I mean, and, and a lot of people don't want to hassle with mixing salt and all of that stuff. It's There's more involved. It's not incredibly difficult, but it's more involved than keeping a freshwater tank. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it, colors... Saltwater tanks are definitely more vibrant and brighter colored. Brighter colored? Than any freshwater tank. Um... So there you go. I mean, yeah, if, you, if that's the thing, then if color is all you're after, sure, go to saltwater. But again, you, you have your own, you're a whole new set of challenges there. So what is it that people love about African cichlids? What is it that you're not getting, Mark? Uh, first of all, one of the things that, that you said in here is is very wrong. I'm not not dumping on you here. I'm just saying they aren't unique minus the shell dwellers. They literally look all the same to me. That could not be further from the truth. Um, unless, I don't know, I don't know what you're looking at, that they all look the same, because all three lakes are vastly different, and within each one of those lakes, there is different, you know, subcategories of fish that all also look different. I mean, they, they're, they're not at all all look the same. There are some that look very similar to others. A great example would be peacocks. Just about every single peacock is going to look just like every other peacock except for the difference in colors. Uh, you do have some like the Jacob Fryer guys and the Ethelwanies and things like that that have a little bit different shape to them but they're still peacocks. Um, but, but you're right there. If you were like I don't understand why people don't like peacocks because they all look the same to me. That I would kind of understand even though they're different colors they, they all have that kind of arrowhead shape, uh, so that I would get. But when you compare the, the difference in appearance of peacocks, haps, and bonas, 
shell dwellers, frontosas, anything from Lake Victoria. You know, compressiceps. Come on, are you kidding me? Have you seen compressiceps? Uh, there's so many different types. And, and again, within those different types, like in Bunas, yeah, all of your metroclemas are going to look similar to the other metroclemas, just different colors. But you've also got pseudotrophias, you know, labiotrophias. You understand what I'm saying? It's like there's so many different types. So I think what the problem here that, that you've had, Mark, is that you're looking in the wrong place if they're all looking the same to you. Uh, they're not at all look the same. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's that's what you said. You didn't say it wrong, but they aren't unique. They all they literally look all the same to me. No, they don't. They're they're very very different. Um, and if you put a, a mixed tank in, which a lot of people would dump on you for, but if you did mix in Bunas peacocks, haps, throw in a couple of frontosas, a couple of compressiceps, they're gonna look very very different uh, throughout the whole tank. So yeah, there you go. But what are you missing? I, I don't, I think you're looking in the wrong place for one, because if they all look the same, but it's the activity level, it's the color, it's the just constant activity, it is the personality, it is vibrance, it's, it's all of that. That's what draws people to African cichlids. Plus, most, not all, most African cichlid keepers are going to heavily stock their tank. There's going to be a lot of fish in there. And so that adds a lot more activity and a lot more things to look at and, and all of that makes it a little more enjoyable to watch. It's a little more entertaining than looking at, you were talking about Central American cichlids, you know, you got one fish in the corner. Well, how many people are going to say that's boring? But if you had 35 fish in that tank and they were all like this constantly around and chasing each other and you know what I'm saying? Different strokes for different folks. But I find that to be significantly more entertaining than one fish sitting in the corner. I love that fish in the corner, but, you know, African cichlids are, are definitely, there's never a dull moment watching them. Uh, so it's the activity level, it's the color, it's the ease of breeding. Breeding is something that is, is important to a lot of fish keepers. Uh, it adds that extra level to the hobby. Uh, it's accessibility, and, and maybe it's not for you, but, but no, you said it would actually be less troublesome for you to obtain. So there you go. Um, they're, they're readily available. They're all over. You can order them online. You can go down to your local pet store. They're all over the place. And uh, they're colorful. They're very active. And they're very fun. And there's a lot of them in the tank. And they're easy to breed. That's why people like them. And the other reason why people like them is because there are so many different types and different shapes and sizes and colors and all of that, which is the exact opposite of what you said. So, yeah, those are the reasons why people love them. And if you end up coming to the dark side and you end up keeping Africans, definitely let me know because I'd like to know. I'm sure I didn't just sell them. I'm all over the place here. But uh, hopefully you come over to our side, the crazy side, and, uh, and you enjoy it. Anyway, there you go. Next question is from Ruby. Hi, John. I recently visited the Ocean Floor Fish Store in Phoenix. I'm assuming Phoenix and viewed a large cube tank with assorted peacocks. I would say that the tank was only a little overstocked, but nothing outrageous. I noticed the large, tall rock in the middle of the tank gave the cichlids more of a surround place to swim instead of back and forth space like your average four foot tank. I also noticed for the few minutes I watched them, the aggression was zero. I was thinking this type of setup must negate a lot of aggression, do you agree? Or did they just finish watching one of your videos and decided to prove you wrong about everything? All right, I, I'm, well, I'm not sure if you were kinda, kinda crapping on me there at the end. I'm not sure what that was all about, uh, but you're not hurting my feelings, I mean, it's fine, but. Uh, just finished watching one of your videos and decided to prove you wrong about everything. I don't think people in Phoenix or a fish store are watching my videos and wanting to prove me wrong. I, I don't know where, what they would have to gain from that. And I also don't know what they would be proving me wrong with. I've, it's not like I've said, 
decorating a tank like that is against the rules. You know what I mean? I've never said anything against that. So I'm not really sure where you were going with the end there. Maybe you were trying to have a little fun. I don't know, but who cares about that? Um, the, the interesting thing here is that you talked about this as if it's a store I've been to. That's how it comes across to me. But I've never been there. I, I, I don't... I have no idea what it is that you're talking about, but what I'm gathering is there's like some type of big rock structure in the middle of the tank, kind of like that, and that gave the fish places to go in and, and be safe from aggression and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. The, the point is, does decor impact aggression in the tank? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. It, it most certainly does. That tank right now has seven peacocks in it, and you probably only see one or two every once in a while because a lot of them are hiding in those rocks. Yes, having a, a rock structure, whether it's in the center or the back or in one of the corners, having something where there is little crevices and little caves and little things like that, whether it's peacocks, haps, and boonas, it doesn't matter. They have to be really big for haps, but if, the, if a fish can fit in there and be comfortable, they're gonna go in there as kind of like a, re a retreat but they're also going to claim that area as theirs, and they might be aggressive towards wanting to protect that. Uh, not as much as they would be if there were females in the tank, but if it's an all-male tank and there's a little spot that one of the males is claimed as his, uh, he's, gonna, he's not gonna want anybody else to go in there, and so he's gonna probably shoo everybody else away in there. But other than that, it does give the fish a place to go instead of just hanging out up in the corners like they do if they don't have anywhere else to go. So yes, uh, having decor in the tank is definitely something that helps to, to curb aggression. Uh, this, the, the opposite can be argued though, and, and you've probably heard me say this before, is that the example I just gave you, if there's a little cave, that fish is going to protect that little cave, causing some aggression. So if you eliminate that, and maybe you heard me talk about this, if you have no decor, if it's just a box, wide open box, you're taking away something that they could potentially fight over. So the having these little spaces for them to, to retreat to is helpful, but it could also be harmful. You understand where I'm going with that? Because it could be something that everybody retreats to their own little spot and everybody's happy and everybody lives cohesively, or it could be that they all fight over all over the, all of those spots. So the biggest thing with African cichlids, whether they're peacocks, whether they're Tanganyikans, doesn't matter. The biggest thing is finding that balance in your tank. That's working for me right now. Yeah, they're still chasing each other around, but there's not anybody getting hurt in that tank. Uh, that's working for me. So I haven't changed that in a while. Um, finding that balance, the balance might be no decor at all. The balance might be one rock or a, a, an elaborate slate stacked up with a, you never know. I mean, you have to find that balance. And apparently this store in Phoenix had a structure in the middle that worked for them and that's great. If your question was, does having the ability to swim around and around and around and around, does that make it different than just being able to go back and forth? I don't think so. I don't think that makes a difference at all. Um, but then again, I could be totally wrong. I've never had a cube type tank that they could go in circles. So I wouldn't know for sure. But I don't think that makes a difference towards aggression. I think the biggest things that make uh, a difference with aggression is no females in the tank. You take that away from them. They won't fight over that. And if you have a bunch of hiding spots. They can be good, they can be bad. They could retreat to them and be happy or they could fight over them. I hope that makes sense. I don't know. I think I'm going off the rails here. So anyway, uh, I wasn't dumping on you, Ruby. I don't know if you, were, uh, if you were dumping on me. It doesn't really matter. It's no big deal. My feelings aren't hurt. Hopefully yours aren't either. Um, and I hope, I, I don't know, I hope I helped. And now it's time for my favorite part of every week. Uh, this one's a quick one. It's going to be fun. It's comment of the week. This is where I comb through all of my comments on my videos, not just Tank Talk videos. And I find a comment that stands out. It could be something mean. It could be something fun. It, who knows? 
This one, kind of picking on Lisa a little bit, but in a fun way and no, no feelings were hurt. It was on the 10 things you should know about betas video. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the way I pronounce beta and Lisa pronounced beta. And he says, it's okay that you mispronounce beta. Lisa says, Valentine's. So you're perfect for each other. She does. Lisa says Valentine's Day. She also says birthday. Um, I, what are you going to do? I mean, this, this is the way she talks. It's adorable. It's fun. Uh, and, you know, it's funny that, that Eric Sherman, who in this avatar is very small. I can very barely see it, but he kind of looks like Dale Jr. But anyway, uh, what was I saying about him? Um, he's having some fun with it. He's not being mean. Uh, but so many people are losing their minds over the way her and I talk. Um, I was hoping when I edited that video, I was hoping nobody would pick up on the Valentine's. I knew she said it, but I was hoping that it was quick enough to where she, but he caught it and, uh, and it is what it is. But that was, uh, he's the only one that's commented on Valentine's, but oh Lord, how many people have commented on beta? It's been rough. And, uh, and Placo is a whole other thing. But anyway, this was fun. Thank you, Dale Jr., for that. And uh, let's move on. All right, last one comes from Jimmy Lee. Finally, an easy name to say here. Love your video. Sorry I don't have Facebook too many X's. <laughs> I have a question. I've been thinking about getting Glowfish because of their radiant color. Been to the pet store. They seem very boring to watch. What is your perception of these fish? Thanks for your time. So my perception of these fish is I don't like them at all. Uh, I'm not with this old fuddy-duddy or anything, folks. It's, that's not me. It's just I, I don't like where they came from. I don't like why they were made the way they are. I, I don't like messing with the fish like that. It's Okay, these fish are bred in a certain way and they change the genetics. I'm not a scientist, I don't know. I don't know how they do this, but a lot of people believe that glowfish are injected. I know that there has been fish in the past that have had some type of injection. I don't know, um, but it, it's not done that way with these glowfish. When you see these, these tetras and things like that that are glowing, uh, it's not from being dyed or uh, from being... Uh, Bye! Sorry, so it's not from them being dyed or injected or anything like that. It's actually the way they're bred, and I, I don't know, it's all very confusing how they get it, but the point is, I don't care how it's done. I don't care how they mess with these fish genetically. It's more why, why they do that. And the, the bottom line is, they do it to attract little kids. I love little kids, I got a whole bunch of them. I got one, a baby in this house. I, he's not mine, grandchild. Got, got a whole slew of kids. It's not that I'm somebody that dislikes kids, but we know kids are not the... I'm talking kids, little, little kids, five, six, seven years old. They're not going to take care of an aquarium. Mom and dad are too busy updating Facebook. They're not going to take care of the aquarium for the little guy. So these fish end up getting neglected at, by these little, little kids. And so they have these fish that are made specifically to attract little kids. And so they're almost set up to be killed. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're designing these fish to bring little kids into the hobby so that mom and dad will buy them something and, and they're, they're setting them up to be killed. I mean, it's, it's just a shame. I don't like that. It's hard enough that they're like only ever under blue lights and they're so bright. It's probably like, the, there's probably vision problems. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like the whole premise behind the whole thing. I think that's taking messing with the fish's genetics a bit too far. Um, and it's just not something that's appealing to me about as far as how they look and all that. Sure, they look kind of cool, but I don't want to look at a dark tank all the time with bright fish in there. That's, that's not appealing to me. I want the tank to be bright. I'm also not into the whole new dark tannins fad that's going on in, in fish keeping not my thing. I've spent 25 years in fish keeping 
doing everything I can do to keep water clear and, and make it look like fish are hovering in there because you can't even see that there's water in the tank. It's so clear. I spent 25 years trying to master that and now you want me to put freaking tea bags in there to make it dark? Come on, no, that's not my thing. I'm not hating on it, it's just not my thing. I'm also not into a dark tank, which, I mean, blue light's dark with these bright fish. I don't know, it's just not my thing. Not, not something that I'm into. Um, and boring to watch, I mean, they're Tetras. They're Tetras and, uh, what are they doing, some garamis and barbs and stuff like that? I don't know. I don't know what all the different fish are that they're doing that with. Um, maybe they are boring. I don't, maybe they have low energy because they've been genetically altered so much. I don't know. But they're not for me. Um, we're actually, we're, we're working on an episode of 10 Things right now that is going to have glowfish in it. So check that out. So, and it might already be up because I'm recording this ahead of time. I don't know. But anyway, there you go. I'm not a fan of Glowfish. I think it's silly. I think it's uh, irresponsible for uh, the industry to do that, to market to little, little kids. We need young people, but kids that are, you know, toddlers, that's a different story. Uh, we don't need them yet. We need them five, six years, but not when they're three and all they're going to do is throw hot dogs in the tank. We don't need that. Anyway, there you go. So there it is. I hope the excess rambling has not affected these videos too much. Had a lot of people say they like that, so I'm kind of just riffing, just going for it now, just talking. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button for me if you're still around watching this. Uh, click the like button, submit your questions down below, all that good stuff, and uh, and you know, you might get your question answered in a future episode. Anyway, this is my 10th video. This is my 10th video that I've recorded today. So I think I'm done for the day. I've had a lot of fun though. It's been a good time. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on next week's episode.